What is up Scream Team, Zach Cherry here, and today we are going to rank all 13 Halloween movies in a tier list. My opinions are a little bit controversial. I don't really follow the same opinion that, you know, maybe the mainstream uh, fan base does. But the thing is, there are 13 movies in this franchise. If you did the math, uh, that is 6.2 billion different permutations of how this can be ranked of like whatever the the order is of of what your movies are so if you're just coming here to be like your list sucks and blah 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 that's great because you're commenting and it's you know good for the algorithm but just know that your list also sucks and everyone else thinks so so just because this list is very unique to me i've given each tier a very specific name this time it's going to be all dr loomis quotes because dr loomis is the best so starting at the bottom we have no reason no uh, conscience, no understanding. This basically means that there's nothing to understand about them. They're garbage. The next one is... Get your ass away from there. This would basically be the movies that, you know, I have no intention of going anywhere near. They're not terrible, but they're just, they're not my movies. One up from that is... You fooled them, haven't you, Mike? And this, um, just going in line with very specific to me, these are the movies that I think are overrated, that essentially everyone's been fooled to think are great. And that's not to take away from anyone else's opinion. I still love these movies. They're just the ones that don't completely do it for me. And then one up from that is... I was doing very well last night! And this is more so for the movies that are... Probably, like, I, I've reevaluated, you know, that, that maybe it, I, it, they're not the best, obviously, but they, um, they, they get unfairly maligned. And as you'll see, part of my controversial opinion is that I'm a huge supporter of a lot of the movies that, that people hate in this franchise. So then that brings us to the very top, which is... As a matter of fact, it was. It was the best, as a matter of fact. So, going through the movies chronologically uh, by release, we'll start with the 1978 original, and I'm not going to pussyfoot around this. This is a perfect movie. And just so you're not expecting uh, any surprises in terms of other movies going in here, I'm just gonna let you know now that this is the only movie that's going in that category. Because, uh, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, the Halloween franchise, as in terms of quality, stops at the original. That doesn't mean that the other movies aren't enjoyable, but me personally, I don't think that anything has lived up to the original or ever will. And that's that's just that's just my take on it. But uh, this movie is just incredible. This was one of the first horror movies after Scream that I you know was ever introduced to. There's just something about it that it's it's timeless. It doesn't age, despite the fact that it's set in the 70s. It was made in the 70s. And it, considering that this was a very low budget film you know, made from next to nothing, like very independent production. It looks spectacular. This set a precedence for filmmaking to show that you don't have to put a lot of money into something to make it look good. So we'll move on to Halloween 2. And this one, um, this has always been a like a delightful surprise to me because initially, like when I first started watching these movies, which was before H2O came out, um, I didn't watch them in sequence. So I had already seen um, Halloween, Halloween 4, Curse of Michael Myers, and H2O before I'd even seen Halloween 2. And to put it on and just see that this is more of the night he came home, like that was mind blowing to me because as much as this is Halloween 2, this is really like one big movie to me, which is why, you know, it was very disappointing to find out for uh, the new trilogy that they were excising uh, Halloween 2 from that canon because, you know, I, I just see this all as like just one big continuous night, like Laurie's Night from Hell. You know, I've said that nothing really compares to the original, but just in terms of like style and cinematography, because it's still all the same crew that are working on this, like Dean Cundy, that this movie just looks like it still belongs as part of the original. I think that like the hospital setting is a great atmosphere. I think this, this 
movie probably has the creepiest atmosphere of any of the Halloween movies. The thing is though, and this was on my most recent rewatch, I just found it to be particularly slow. But I'm still gonna say that, that uh, he was doing very well last night. Because um, remember, keep in mind, nothing is going in this category anymore. Everything is gonna be from here down. Halloween 3 Season of the Witch. This movie just keeps getting better and better for me. <laughs> and, you know, like right now, this is where I'm gonna piss off a lot of people. So I think that what the Halloween franchise should have been, I mean, like, there should have never been Halloween 2. I mean, I, don't get me wrong, I love the fact that we do have that and we do have every, you know, that we have more Michael Myers. But had this been like what John Carpenter and Deborah Hill originally wanted was to do an anthology series and have every movie be a different story that's all based on Halloween night, that would have been amazing. The, the issue is that they had already gone ahead and, and done Halloween 2, which kind of set a precedence that um, people were expecting Michael Myers. So, I mean, for instance, John Carpenter's The Fog came out in 1980. If they had just called that Halloween 2, The Fog, and then made that like the second anthology chapter, and then like Season of the Witch, the third one, like people would have been so on board because this movie is really good and people just discount it because it's not Michael Myers and it's a little too wacky for them. But I don't know, there's just, there's so much I love about it. This movie has the best score of, of, any of the films like i love the traditional like halloween michael myers uh centric movie theme like the dun, 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 dun. but the one in halloween 3 is so good and again like it's still john carpenter and john and that's another thing john carpenter has always spoken very highly of this movie like out of any any film other than the original this is the one that from what i've seen from him in interviews he praises the most like of course like the new trilogy he's an executive producer he has to you know be on board for it he, you know he has a financial stake in everything but uh halloween 3 i agree with john carpenter and i'm gonna say this is he was doing very well last night um because keep in mind this was a movie that i also didn't like when i initially saw it um and it was probably one of the last ones that i did watch of what was available at the time so it's yeah it's grown on me and i'm gonna say that it's better than Halloween 2. I mean, I think that these three movies, like this, what I like to call the John Carpenter trilogy, I just love the fact that like, there's a consistency in just style and quality uh, among these these three, because they were all shot with that anamorphic widescreen lens, which just, it just gives it like the appearance of looking like much better quality than it actually should be. Let's get to Halloween 4 now. I really liked this movie when I when I first saw it because this was, you know, one of the only two that were available at the video store that I would go to. So, you know, I would alternate back and forth between watching Halloween and Halloween 4. And I think that why a lot of people really love it is because it's like the original, a very simple premise. So to me, like that is kind of a detriment because it, it, it does make it very basic. Uh, it, there, it, it feels like there's nothing that's really overly special about it. And like I was saying, just in terms of uh, the way that a movie looks. This one, I feel, is a huge step backwards because this one looks like it was a made-for-TV movie. Like, everything is so up close, just, like, tight shots. There's, like, fake fog. Like, they have fog machines in it. But uh, I think just the fact that it exists, that is something to be spoken for because this was a dead franchise after season of the witch and while like there were already five or six friday the 13th and nightmare on elm street movies um that people wanted michael and just the fact that mustafa cad got this movie made that's pretty impressive because if it wasn't for that we wouldn't have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten more movies after that personally i just find it very middle of the road um, and kind of overrated. So that's why like for me, it goes and you fooled them, haven't you? But I, I do like, this is a movie that I, if I was to do a marathon, this would always be included, which, I mean, I don't want to show my hand too soon, but I'll, we'll just say that this, this is one that I still think is good Halloween. Like this is still the Halloween movies that I enjoy. So next up is Halloween five, 
which, I mean, I've always known that this was hated. I guess I just didn't realize how hated it was. And it kind of like surprises me how, how much people dislike this movie because I find this one to be so incredibly fun. Like I just enjoy it so much. It's, it's like so bad it's good territory. I would like even call this a guilty pleasure, um, but I don't feel guilty about liking it. Like you have to go into this one looking at it as though it's a comedy because it's like hilarious. It's freaking hilarious. And it's from a European director. So it has a very distinct European vibe to it. There was a lot of decisions made in this movie that were like this guy took so many liberties just making this the story, whatever he wanted to. And at the time, like they were just riding the, the wave of success from Halloween 4. So I think uh, Mustafa Akkad was just like, yeah, sure, yeah, you can do all those things. And then maybe regretted it later on. But I don't know, like this movie, as bad as this is, like something like badness does not reflect on the same of like personal enjoyment. So um, I actually really like, Halloween 5, and I'm gonna put it, and he was doing very well last night, but I'm not gonna put it above these two. Um, so there, that's that, you know? Another decision that probably triggered a lot of people, but you know, maybe this next one will as well, because now we've got Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers. And also I should point out, because I didn't mention before, obviously I'm just ranking 13 films. I'm not doing, producer's cuts or director, well, Rob, there's two cuts of both Rob Zombie's films, the theatrical and, the, and the, the director. I'm just doing the one that I, like, I think it's the director's cut that I own. That's what I'm basing it on. I've seen the theatrical cuts. I've seen the producer's cut of Halloween, Curse of Michael Myers, you know, cause then you could start incorporating like, what about the television version of Halloween one or Halloween two? Like there's, you could add so many to this list. I'm not doing that, that's that's pointless. Um, and if it came down to it, I would probably pick the theatrical version of Halloween six over the producer's cut anyway. Um, but this is, I think this is the first Halloween movie I saw. I could be wrong. It was either the original or this one. And I think that what had, my mistake because there was no number on it. It doesn't say six. I think I initially thought that this was the sequel. This was the first sequel because I hadn't seen any of the other ones after that. So when I got it and just put it on, you, you, I mean, if you, you've seen this movie, it's so convoluted right out the gate that I was just so lost. And I think that like, because of that and just going through my initial experience with this movie was not good. Like I just did not like this movie. Um, at the time, like of the seven that came out, like uh, after H2O, this was my least favorite. And this is another one that the more I watch it, the more I just really come to love it. The story's terrible. I mean, it's not even terrible. It's just, it's incomplete. This movie also has a, the distinction of being released in a pre-Scream era of the 90s. We would get movies like Wes Craven's New Nightmare and um, the first sequel to Candyman. And um, it was like the fourth Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie that, that everyone hates. Jason Goes to Hell even. And I mean, like a lot of those movies are really bad, but there's a, there's a certain essence to them that I don't know what it is. Cause it's almost like they're, they're lost in time. It's almost like a, a relic of like an, like an eighties holdover, but not quite 90s yet cinematography wise like this like it doesn't get enough credit for how it looks because it's like shot and lit like really well so i know like a lot of people latch on to certain things that they don't like about movies and this one probably more so the the plot but i can put that aside because there's there's so many things that that uh, elevate it for me and that's another thing like michael is scary in this particular movie. This might be like the scariest Michael to me. So I'm not going to justifiably, like I can't say that he was doing very well last night. Like this is, this should not be up here, but I'm gonna put it in you fooled them, haven't you? And um, controversial, yes, but I'm gonna put it above Halloween 4 because I find this movie more interesting than Halloween 4. If you're still with me, um, thanks for sticking around because um, things are gonna get a lot weirder because um, next we have H2O, 
Um, and this is a movie that... I really loved this movie when I first saw it. I've, and it's another one that's very, like it's it's almost like a time capsule movie. It's it's trapped in, in time. Like this is what I'm talking about. Like the original Halloween, you could show that to audiences like at any point in time, like new, new people that come in and start watching Halloween, they can watch the original and like it would be a good movie to them. Like it would not feel out of time. Whereas, you know, you watch something like Halloween H2O and this is very much a movie that is influenced by Scream. And because I really love Scream, you should think that I'd be a huge Halloween H2O stan. But this is the one movie in this franchise that the more and more I watch it, the less I enjoy it. Like there's just like diminishing returns with each viewing. This movie has a lot of problems, uh, mainly production wise. And I think just the, the fact that it looks very shoddy, the masks, the four different masks, because it, like, I, like I said, the, the Halloween 6 mask was pretty decent and they did a pretty good recreation of that for this movie. And it can only be seen in the opening scene. And then after that, it's sort of like toggling back and forth between the K and B and the Stan Winston mask, and then even a CGI mask. So it, like none of it looks good. Another huge detriment is like Michael Myers himself. Like aside from the mask, the guy who plays him, it's just not a good, I mean, it's more ghost facey than, I mean, it's not like as high energy as ghost face, but it's just not how Michael Myers moves. The score of this movie is also, I mean, it's, the score that was made was this more Hitchcockian style sort of thing. And the studio hated it because it didn't sound like Halloween at all. So they ended up getting Marco Beltrami to come in and rearrange his scores from Scream and Mimic um, and just kind of like make that the, the official score of this movie, um, if, if you could even call it official. So if you watch this movie and listen to it closely, you'll notice that so many compositions and arrangements are exactly the same ones from Scream. It doesn't sound like a Halloween movie. It doesn't look like a Halloween movie. It doesn't feel like a Halloween movie. It feels Scream light. Having said that, there is a lot to love about this because I, you know, I think that this is Jamie Lee Curtis's best performance of the franchise, that blood connection between them, like the, um, the, the sibling connection, like that kind of forges everything together thematically for me that it, it makes sense. I like where she's at here. Like I can understand, like she's spent the last 20 years running from from her fear and, and all that and, and hiding and what that's done to her and her relationship with her son, who also Josh Hartnett is great in this too. I just think that their performances together, like their, the dynamic of like the, the mother son, is just, it's so good. That scene of them on the street arguing, like I can quote that entire thing verbatim. Like I love that scene so much. It's just the drama of it all. Like I love it. The thing with this movie is the, it's the story. It's it's just kind of like Laurie's conclusion. Like if this had been the end of the franchise, like I would have been fine with that. So even though like production wise, I think this is probably the weakest. I mean like four and five don't look great by any means, but I, I they still feel like Halloween movies. So I'm gonna put it, do I put it above or below five? Again, I'm gonna piss off a lot of people. I'm gonna put it below because I, like while I love the story, like there's just, it, it could have been better. Whereas I feel like Halloween 5 is not a perfect movie, but it's perfect for me in all of its imperfections. And it feels like a Halloween movie. Wow, yeah, like I'm really like working through a lot of uh, my stuff here while doing this, this tier ranking. So Halloween Resurrection, um, this is going in no reason, no conscience, no understanding. This movie, it, like it's terrible. I, I I cannot fathom how this got made. I mean, like here's the thing, like I was already like a huge Halloween fan before this came out. And when we found out, cause they announced pretty quickly after H2O that like, no, we're gonna make another one. And everyone was like, how are they gonna bring him back? Like she chopped off his head at the end. And I think like the only thing that I could 
possibly think of was that it was someone else behind the mask. But just to, to actually find out that that's what they did was a huge disappointment. But even that, even like the opening scene and all the stuff with Lori, as disappointing and offensive as it is, especially just given her triumph at the end of H2O, um, and then there's just this basically taking everything back, like that was still, you know, I could still be on board for this movie, but everything that comes after that is awful. You know, when I think about this movie and I think about the, the, the plot, there is no plot. It's really non-existent. They basically had a premise, which I think was a bunch of writers sitting around a writing room and just throwing out every popular trend at the time. So that would have been found footage, reality television, models, let's get like, like rappers and models. They just had to throw in so many things to just try to draw the broadest audience possible just get as many people in the theater and that's the thing like when you try to uh please everybody you end up pleasing nobody this movie is also really ugly it's got that that just like washed out like everything is so drab look to it which was very much like present in like a lot of movies that came out in the early 2000s but you also have so much edited in headcam footage of just the low quality 360 that this movie makes me nauseous because because of all that. The quality of this movie is just, it's non-existent. And just the fact that there is no story, like they, they get into the house and their thing is like, well, we should probably look for clues for like for what? And then the side story of like the kids, like the Deckard watching it, like it's just, it's not good. It's really bad. And I don't even want to talk about it anymore. It's, it's, a, it's at the bottom. We'll just, we'll leave it there. So next up is, is Rob Zombie's Halloween remake. And I remember like when I saw this, I really liked it at the time. Like when I went to see it at the, the theater, it was uh, a, like a sneak preview advanced showing like this is before they did the uh like the thursday night previews so this was kind of like a big deal like my friend and i got like advanced tickets i don't even remember how and the audience was like packed and like off the hook like everyone was like having a really good time like you think of like movie theater experiences that you've had where just like everyone was like into a movie and you get people like stand up at the end and do a standing ovation i think that kind of colored my experience of the movie on the initial watch through because i mostly like attributed my enjoyment based on the audience um and just like being in the actual theater because when i watched this movie today i hate it <laughs> and it's i mean i'm not i'm not hot on remakes as it is but um you guys probably know if you've been following me that i really hate prequels even more and this is what this movie is it's half of a prequel and then the other half is a remake i don't need to know about michael's childhood it, it like it takes all of the piss out of everything that we know about him later on to just see this kid grow up and the fact that he's it's like a different version of Michael, like it's a different retelling, whereas like John Carpenter's Michael Myers is a killer based on nature. The Michael Myers from the Rob Zombie verse is just based on like having a really crappy childhood upbringing. And it just, it doesn't make sense like for this character to go from like point A, just like this whiny little brat um, to like what he becomes, like this big hulking Frankenstein's monster going around and like senselessly killing people without speaking. Like it just, I don't see the through line. I also don't love how nihilistic that like both of Rob Zombie's movies are. And everything about these movies, especially more so in the sequel, but you know, kind of in this one too, it's just like grungy. It's just like, how can we take all of these like cherished memories that we know from John Carpenter and just kind of like defile them and make them unpleasant. And that's just what I see with like all of, all of like the like set pieces and the characters. Like I just don't connect with with Lori, Annie, and Linda in this in this uh, universe, like I just I I don't care about them. It it, it feels 
just like so sacrilegious to to even be remaking a movie like this and just re remaking these characters and not to say that like anyone did a bad job with it but it's just it's not my bag i would say no reason no conscience no understanding but i do think that there are qualities about these movies that i you know i i, I wouldn't want to just lump it in that category because i think that this is specifically for movies that's that are awful that should not have been made um and that no quality work or passion went into it because i do think that rob zombie did at least put an effort into making a movie because there's clearly there's an audience for this um i'm just not part of that audience so i'm gonna say get your ass away from there which is just my my ass getting my own ass away from from these there's also the, there's like a 15 minute chase scene at the end just watching her crawl around this house for 15 minutes like there's a time to know like when to extend the moment and, and you know make something suspenseful and then there's another time where it's just all padding and i feel like there's a lot of that uh with rob zombies 2007 halloween so halloween 2 I've kind of already shown my hand uh, with this one, but this one is also going and get your ass away from there. This is a hard watch. Um, it's a, you know, just it's, speaking of how like Resurrection was difficult to watch with like all the shaky cam, like this is a movie that's very offensive to my senses as well. Possibly even more nihilistic than, than the first one. I don't know, like neither, I don't like either of these movies. Like I, like I full on have gotten to the point where I don't even include them in a marathon anymore. Like I would just go one to resurrection. Maybe I would even exclude resurrection. Um, and then uh, 2018 kills ends. Cause these ones, I just, I just don't even like to acknowledge that they're part of the franchise anymore at this point. But I think that there is more originality to the second one. And I don't know, like I, I slightly enjoyed a little bit better, I, even though it's, it's, does go against a lot of who Michael Myers is. Like we see him walking around without his mask on for so much of the movie. Like that's a huge offense right there. But yeah, I think I think I just slightly enjoyed a little bit more. But you know what? These are this is it. This is the this is the bottom because I don't think that you know aside from these it really gets any worse. So we're gonna get to 2018 now, and this one, oh boy. Um, there's a lot that I really like about this, and there's a lot that I really don't like. And I think that, you know, just in terms of what we were talking about before of just production value, this one really raises the bar. Because I think that like of all the movies to date, this is probably like, it just looks the best. Everything from The Mask to The Kills and like even like recreating Haddonfield, like that's the thing, like I don't think that outside of like that, that connective tissue that we saw from Halloween to Halloween 2, that like Haddonfield in every sequel after this has not looked like Haddonfield. Like it's like, obviously they've shot in different locations. It wasn't Pasadena, but at least with, with this trilogy, David Gordon Green does a really good job of making Haddonfield look like the original Haddonfield. But there's a lot of, story decisions um, and writing in this movie that I just, it takes me out of it. I'm a huge fan of Judy Greer. I do not like her character at all. Dr. Sartain, like the, the, the whole idea of separating Michael and Laurie as brother and sister, like I'm fine with that. If that's what they wanted to do, cool. This is a choose your own adventure franchise. But the fact that they basically tethered these two characters back together and, you know, that was the goal that they had to come up with this huge plot contrivance to do so, that really undermines the whole story for me. Having said that, I think that the ending of this, like the, the last 15 or 20 minutes or whatever, that is really well done. But the, like the, the logic and like the ride to it doesn't really work as well for me. So this is one that, like I watch it and you know, I, I, I like it to a point, but it's not one that I would put on repeat. So I'm gonna put this in, you fooled them, haven't you? 
and I'm gonna put this below Halloween 4. Obviously this is an opinion that a lot of people are not going to share because this is like everybody's second favorite movie it seems but uh, personally I'm I think it's very middle of the road so I, I'm gonna I'm gonna put it there and then that'll bring us to Halloween Kills and oh man I gotta say this was a huge disappointment for me because I had really high expectations. I, I felt that almost like with 2018, they kind of laid the groundwork for what they were going to do. And it was almost like, okay, now they've set everything up for kills. This is going to be the one where, you know, it just, it gets back to like what Michael Myers is and, and you know, just killing people because that's the title of, of the movie. And I mean, they didn't not do that because obviously, you know, he goes on a full on massacre here, but the whole evil dies tonight mob stuff, it, it just, it, it just was a little bit too much. They just went overboard with that. Because there are things in this movie that I really like. I think like the opening, the whole 1978 flashback is incredible, just how they recreated that. And again, just in terms of like the quality, uh, like the production quality of the movie, like it looks great. But the characters and just like bringing back all these legacy characters like like Lindsay and Tommy and Marion and Sheriff Brackett, they don't do anything with them. It just felt like such a slap in the face, like specifically for Marion, who was already killed off in H2O and had a much better send off there and actually like put up a decent fight for her to come back here and just be so throwaway. There's so much fan service in here, which is really just fan disservice. So other than the opening, like the, this whole movie was just a, like a constant disappointment from from beginning to end. And it, it didn't get any better for me. I don't know if I want to put this in get your ass away from there, because I still think that there's, I could still watch this. I'm gonna, okay, I'll put it in you fooled them, haven't you? And it's gonna go under under Halloween. I, def I definitely think this is the worst of the trilogy, the new trilogy, which might be another hot take. Uh, but but yeah, because now I've already told you that I don't hate Halloween Ends the most. So, I mean, if, you, if you've already watched my explanation, or uh, not explanation, but just like the, the full plot breakdown of Halloween Ends and my initial review for that movie, you'll know that this was my favorite one of the three. And I think that what works uh, so well in this one is that it, you know, it finally has a mostly focused plot. And I say mostly focused because, you know, there's, there's two storylines in this movie and the, the, the main one, or just like at least the one that this was marketed as, uh, is really non-existent, which is the, the final battle between Michael and Laurie, which is the what this trilogy has kind of been promoted as from the start. And that's why so many people are upset and, and hate this one right now. So it's almost like that, the entire idea of that was so tenuous from 2018 to Kills to this movie and especially seeing as how none of the groundwork for the like, final confrontation at the end was really laid out at any point in this movie. But I think like the, the everything with Corey, that was done so well. Like every, the, the whole setup with that, that I almost wish that this was a character that was introduced in 2018 or even kills at the very least, because this would have been a great through line from 2018 to ends. And instead, they just, it, it feels shoehorned in because they just introduced it in the last chapter at the beginning. And because they knew that this is not what people are coming to see this movie for. Nobody wants to come and see a movie about Corey and this this love affair with with Allison or whatever. So it doesn't even get a proper conclusion. They, they spend the entire time, like 90 minutes, building this up just to, just to throw it away to have the, the, the Michael Lori battle at the end. Like, I almost wish that Jamie Lee Curtis wasn't in these movies because it's almost like they felt forced to accommodate this character in the story. And I don't even like Lori in this movie. I, like, I just find her so self-righteous and very antagonistic too. Like, she is not 
the hero that I'm rooting for and just like kind of how the movie postures her by the end. What I would have liked is if in 2018, or no, it didn't even have to be revealed in 2018, but it could have been revealed in, in Kills or Ends, uh, to find out that Lori was the one that caused the bus to crash. Because that's a that's a thing that comes up in all of these movies, and especially in this one where Allison like point blank says to her, you are obsessed with, with Michael Myers to the point where it is killing everyone else around you. Um, that that would have made sense. It would have made sense if Laurie was like low key the villain, you know. And I agree. This this is not a Halloween film in a sense that it's 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 a huge departure. But I mean, as you can tell, like look at the departures that I like better already. Like I'm, I'm, I like the more offbeat uh, entries in this franchise. So, where do I put this? Honestly, okay, it's either it's gonna go and you fooled them, haven't you? Because like, there's still there's a lot of problems with this movie, a lot. Like it's not and it's not scary. That's the thing. Um, but it's it's just the direction is just so much more focused and and, and clearer, uh, uh, like up until the end. So just because I'm like a huge fan of classic. Halloween. I'm going to put it after Halloween 4. So really, like, I... Yeah, I think this is it. This is going to be my final my final ranking. Anyway, thank you for taking this journey with me. If you guys want to see more Halloween-related content, you can check out one of these playlists right over here. Until next time, I've been Zach Cherry, and I'll be right back.